the final chamber. We are villagers no more. No longer do we seek merely to survive. We are not folk anymore. We are heroes now, or at least killers. And we will not look back, and we will not stop. Until we find it. Until we find the RPG mainframe. <laughs> nice and short, right? Greetings, programs. It's your old buddy Ingrid Byrne all here. Welcome back to the RPG mainframe here on Runehammer, the podcast that's built to last. Good to have you guys. It's a Saturday night. The dungeon DJ is about to explode with another crazy set. But before that, I had to get this podcast done. Now, as you guys may know, here in July, uh, just about all my effort is focused on YouTube to document the creation of my sort of miniature campaign or adventure called the Hecoon Carapace. Now, this puts you in a funny position as patrons because what normally you exclusively get for your generous support is now going to be available to everybody this month. And so for the RPG mainframe tonight... I didn't want to talk about more Hecoon Carapace stuff because there's a little bit more work to do on it and we're just, there's plenty going on in that mind thread. I wanted to share with you something that's a little bit more of a Tony Robbins moment. We're going to get a little more motivational. We're going to get a little more fuzzy. We're going to little get, we're going to get a little bit, little, we're going to get a little, little bit more huggy and feely. It's going to be great. Basically, I wanted to do a podcast about how can we put it i think i've in my mind as i've been preparing for tonight i've been calling it letting go now the moment that instantly comes to my mind when i think about the phrase letting go is luke skywalker in his x-wing flying down the trench on the death star the other guys are trying to use the targeting computers he's like man this force stuff's kind of cool you know and then ben is like let go luke and that's it and so he turns off the targeting computer, and at, and th this will all become uh, uh, clear why I'm going to such detail here. But then all the commanders back at the command post are just like, Luke, you turned off your computer. Oh, no, you must be giving up. But it, Luke was doing the exact opposite of giving up. He was like bringing his mind to bear, and he was releasing all of this control and this, this stranglehold on the outcome. And as we all know, then you get the big bada, big bada boom, Death Star's toast, everybody thinks Luke is cool. But to me, that crucial moment was letting go. And it is no different for us both as Dungeon Masters, especially as Dungeon Masters, but also as players, as lovers and livers of this RPG hobby. So let's take a minute and meditate upon the concept of letting go. Now, what do I mean exactly by letting go? Well, you know, on the one hand, it's sort of a very fuzzy, uh, easy to waylay kind of psychological term, right? It kind of uh, implies that you're going to release your sense of control. And that is exactly what I sort of want to represent with this talk. But more so, each little detail from Luke Skywalker's story is going to prove to be very salient for us as Dungeon Masters and how we're going to let go. Okay, now in specific... This topic has come to my mind because of our game Thursday night. Now, as many of you guys may know, we've got a long-running game called Roll for Effort. You can look up Roll for Effort on YouTube. It's uh, thanks to the diligent work of Jason Scranton. A lot of our sessions are documented there, if you guys care to be spectators on our crazy, weird worlds. But on Thursday night, I really feel that there was a letting go that occurred that was wonderful to witness. And so while that experience is fresh in my mind, I not only wanted to retell the story to you guys, but I wanted to 
I don't think wallow is the right word, <laughs> but I wanted to revel in that experience. And I wanted to revel in the realizations that I took away from that, which is a crazy thrilling night of gameplay for me. And I think just an all around feel good session. So the backstory on what happened here is that we've been playing for a while now in JD's uh, sort of story arc. I think maybe we're on the eighth session or so. And uh, against all my sort of, uh, you know, awkward, itchy skin sensations of bringing things up, I sort of called a little bit of, you know, tri the tribunal card on our, on our chat channel there. And I said, you guys, you know, for some reason, I'm not really connecting with these characters. I'm having a hard time. And, you know, this is a hard thing to say when you're in a, in a campaign or a series of adventures with your friends. Like, this is kind of hard to bring up because you don't want to be a poo-poo, but you want to be honest. But you also don't really want to critique anybody's play style or, or critique your dungeon master in a way that's, you know, negative or anything. But at the same time, as, as a shield waller of Runehammer, in my mind, you know, you have an obligation to the truth and to, like, speaking honestly. And if your friends are really your friends, they're going to appreciate it and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be for the best. And so we got through some of this talk, you know, and, you know, why maybe we're not fully identifying with these characters and maybe something about the story arc maybe uh, missed a few key cues that could have pulled us deeper into it and stuff. And so this this tribunal isn't just pointed at one person because I think then that can be very difficult and that can make that person feel really attacked and, and I don't think you're going to get anywhere. But if everybody's just looking at the game together and asking, you know, maybe why are we not quite feeling like super psyched from DM to all players? I think then you're going to get a positive outcome. And so that's what happened to us. We had this talk. We kind of wanted to be a little more heroic. We realized we were kind of pining for some of our favorite tropes that weren't present in this. Um, we realized maybe we would want to compress the next few sessions rather than it being quite so plodding or sprawling, you know. And none of this was really meant as a negative critique to any one player, but we had the discussion, and that's what matters, okay? So that's your little backstory. Then it comes game night. Right, you throw back a beer and a Red Bull, and you are ready to throw some dice. We're getting in there. And for one thing, I was really, really happy for JD because I think he's had a little bit of a creative or mental block with his dungeon mastering that he's in some way maybe hesitant to really hurl his world at us. And, you know, uh, this is a very understandable limitation. You don't want to just light your players on fire and watch them run around screaming till they die, right? That that's not good dungeon mastering. But if if your the world's fire or the world's peril or danger isn't really real and beyond the players, like if it's tuned to the players' capabilities, it's not real danger. And so always as dungeon masters, we're riding this this sort of limit, right? We're riding the limit between it's it's easy enough where it's not really causing that much drama or it's so hard that it's just frustrating or so deadly that things are just over, right? And you want to be in the middle somewhere. And I didn't have a, a good constructive solution, to be honest, for JD. It's just I felt that the danger levels in our games were being nerfed as we played sometimes. And so moments that could be intensely exciting and very, very dangerous came away feeling more safe. And maybe this was part of why we weren't getting those life or death decisions that made us closer friends, which to me is what D&D is all about. Playing at the table is all about, right? And so I was really happy on the one side to see JD respond to this whole discussion we had with a totally positive sort of response. Like, he, he really took it to heart, I think, in a way. And so as the session is unfolding, Right away, we could feel that he had taken the taken the handcuffs off as a DM, and he was hurling this world at us in, in the best way possible, in a really good way. He's just bringing it, and the danger just was right there. We had a couple of great sort of switcheroo, red herring moments there in the beginning of the session. We kind of get through this, that, and the other thing, and then we come into basically an, an ultra kill room for him, which is like this boatload of elven archers, like a lot of them, more than 20, all arrayed at us at the entrance. And we had sort of made this pact as players to hurl ourselves into the challenges. And we had decided we don't want to be villagers anymore. We want to be heroes, and we're going to go for it from now on. 
And so it made a great confluence. And that's the other side of the tribunal is that we had, as players, we realized that we wanted to be bigger and more heroic. And we wanted, we didn't want to just be sort of surviving villagers anymore. We wanted to really be heroes of the realm. You know, it's a trope that's really useful in role playing because you can really put yourself inside that and feel good about it. So bang, we're hurling our bodies at this challenge. The challenge is way beyond us, but we don't care because we're role playing it and it's awesome. Then for the first time in any game I've been in, Kelsey's uh, character rolls a blunder on a power four spell. So those of you who are familiar with ICRPG magic, when this happens, you go to the highest volatility magic blunder table and you roll a D12. JD gets us the roll. The blunder result is that she loses control of her magic and this sort of intense vortex portal opens that's sucking everything into the void of the astral plane. And it's strength rolls for everything as the entire room, all these archers, all of us, everything is being sucked into this portal. So on the one hand, the whole setup was completely disrupted. My character's role play was going right for their boss and like basically going for her throat. And I think this was also very disruptive. I think a, a conversation of some kind was supposed to occur, but just total chaos breaks out. We have characters dropping and sliding along the ground when they're unconscious because they're going to go into the portal. Um, Kelsey's a character actually goes into the portal, has this whole conversation with her God and this whole role play insanity that happens that gets her out. And she can help us, but really, we're kind of still over our head. We're not going to make it. Our, our margin of survival was razor, razor thin, and that's what made it so exciting. And so we have to band together. We're making really tough choices between preserving ourselves, between acting on player knowledge or acting on character personality, like all the things that everybody who does <laughs> RPG podcasts and YouTube videos is always on about, right? All these moments, dilemmas, tough choices, really like in like in the moment role playing, life or death danger, plenty of monsters with tons of damage output and like all kinds of great stuff happening. Right. So the night went on and, we, you know, we kind of barely scratched through it and and sort of moved on to our next chapter. But the interesting part to me is that the only thing that really changed that made this session so much more magical was the letting go. And what was let go of was all this stuff that we put so much effort and thinking into, right? <laughs> and that's what's crazy. So let's look at it from the two sides. The one side is the dungeon master. Hang on. I'm, I'm adjusting my, my situation here. Okay. So on the one side, you have the Dungeon Master. What does it mean for JD, in this case, to let go? In my mind, it is a funny antithesis to what the DM is doing all the time, which is the opposite of letting go. Okay, the DM is preparing content, preparing what NPCs might say, laying out encounters spatially with where enemies and obstacles and architecture perhaps are playing into what the geometry of a battle or an encounter might be. Then the DM is also fiending and being concerned with what a level of danger or challenge could be that's going to be fun but not deadly but not boring and like trying to ride that line with uh, what he or she knows of the characters, right? And all of these skills have nuance and are learned over time and you get better and better at them as a dungeon master. You also learn with your group and so you learn to tune to a group what they can and can't handle or what they will and won't enjoy. Right, All the things that I've been talking about on Runehammer for years now on YouTube and here on Patreon, all those things are going into the skill of being a really compelling dungeon master. But sometimes... All of it is less fun than simply letting go of all of it, going with whatever might be happening, just running with it, taking totally unexpected events and releasing all of your prep, 
all of your control, all of your sense of what the best thing to do is or the coolest thing or, you know, what, you know, the predicted outcomes and all these things. Now, I know that you guys can see what I'm about to say as I discuss it on this topic, right? The concept of letting go is not difficult to comprehend. I, I can't imagine you really need me to explain what I mean by a dungeon master sort of letting go and going with it, right? We talk about this stuff all the time. But the purpose of the podcast, for me at least, speaking to you guys, my shield wall, is almost the mantra or affirmation of letting go, not the explanation of letting go. Letting go as a concept is very, very easy to understand, and all of us strive to do it. We put so much work into building edifices of intellectual skill and competence and efficacy and excitement and suspense. All of us understand that to truly enjoy the performance or the delivery of all that preparation requires a certain amount of letting go, right? It's just like the minute the curtain raises, your time to prepare and practice and develop and plan is over. The curtain goes up and all your plans are out the window and now it's either do or die and just go for it, right? That is the art of performance, which is central to all dungeon mastering. So the concept of letting go very easy. We're all familiar with it. And I think everybody universally acknowledges that letting go is the, the key to Zen. It's the key to your best performance. It's releasing. It's, it's to stop thinking about how to move your legs and to simply sprint, right? To just let it happen. And then you're truly in the moment and you're at your best. So I'm not here to explain letting go to you guys. What I'm here is to, to help you affirm it, to reaffirm it, and then reaffirm it again. And I would like this to be what you take away as you're listening to this words on the, uh, these words on this podcast. Let go. Or if you say it in a reflexive sense as an affirmation, you say, I'm comfortable with letting go. I'm going to let go. I'm going to release my control on statistics. I'm going to release my sense of what's supposed to happen or what's going to happen. I'm going to release worry about exactly where this challenge is going to fall on the fun scale. <laughs> I'm going to put myself in the moment and I'm just going to run and have fun and have a bunch of energy. And here to me is the real dividend of letting go, and this is where the affirmation really gets some guts. The holding of the brain onto edifices of intellectual work, right, structures that we create, for the brain to hold those structures, to grip them in a way, and sometimes to even squeeze them, to really force them, it takes a ton of energy. It takes a lot of thinking threads, like all at the same time. It takes monitoring incoming data. It takes monitoring outgoing data. You guys know what I'm talking about. For anyone who's dungeon mastered more than one or two sessions, a big part of the skill is monitoring all the numeric and role-playing data that is coming in, and then monitoring or remembering all that you're putting out, be it damage, statements from NPCs, revelations about story, descriptions of scenes, that's your outgoing data, right? And you're monitoring both, and you're keeping a mental record of the entire situation, and that is what an adventure or a campaign is. And it takes tons of mental energy to execute this art. But you've only had your one beer and your one Red Bull, and so you are limited in your ability to just burn raw mental energy. You just don't have an infinite amount of it. And here's my thesis and my affirmation here. Your mental energy is better used in the moment than it is monitoring and controlling and holding. It's better used laughing, doing crazy voices and sound effects, doing fast, decisive player turn calls, like letting a player know when it's their turn right after the previous player finishes. So everything stays snappy. Everybody feels really invited to come forth and play. And then most of all, your energy is spent on your sort of dork level. <laughs> and I don't mean this in a derogatory way at all. It's the dorking. You're strong dorking. And it takes a bunch of energy to go full in 
to really embrace the moment, to put your mind in the imagination space of the moment rather than the referee space. That's the controller. The referee is the monitor. But I believe that when a dungeon master really releases all of their prep, and I mean really like you can even be inventing and jotting down monster mechanics on the spot that fit the moment better. As long as you're not just completely making everything up out of the blue because players are never going to find a foothold in that kind of silliness, and there's no verisimilitude, right, which is a feeling of a real world behind the secrecy. So you can't take it that far, but you can take it far enough to say, like, I'm playing like you guys are. I'm a player at the table. And I know some RPGs already have sort of espoused this view, that the GM is just another player, and I think that's a great way to focus and just let out the mental energy that for many of us is consumed by control, preparation, and data monitoring. And here is a detailed affirmation to give yourself. I'm going to let go of all of it when this, gets our, when this session starts and everybody shows up and we're all laughing because we were talking about last session and we're ramping up and we're testing our dice and everybody's cracking their knuckles. I'm going to let go of all of it. Nothing needs to happen. And things that do happen don't need to happen a certain way. It's just, here it comes. Here it comes. So again, it's not rocket science, and I really don't think it's surprising. But as an... Okay, so on the player's side for letting go, I really, really believe that the challenge for the player with letting go is to take this mental energy and blast right through the sort of social components. I think for players, it's more challenging to go full dork, whereas the dungeon master is expected to. I think it's harder for players to do it sometimes. I think it's it can be hard to fully leap into your character and fully be energetic and go ahead and sometimes talk just when it strikes you. You know, you don't want to be disruptive, but sometimes you just need to just say it. You just need to go for it and just to be, to be yourself and run with it. And I think that this takes the form most often of doing things your character would do that you as a player would not. This is, to me, the, the high form of letting go for a player. You let go of what would be the best outcome. You let go of understanding like how you could really kick ass at this or what would be the most effective weapon or spell or object to use. And instead you have that moment where you just have an instinct. You're like, I'm just going to run up there and I'm just going to, that's what I would do. And you don't second guess it. You don't use the energy of your mind to analyze what the outcome would be. You use the energy of your mind to role play the lines and the descriptions and the acting and the loyalty to your friends that makes D&D &D so damn fun to play. <laughs> and so similarly, you have this affirmation before the game begins, which is, just, I'm just going to let go of it all tonight. I'm just going to let it all hang out. I don't give a fuck. I'm so psyched to play tonight. I'm just, I'm going to go full bonkers. Now, you still need to be contained by your turn, and you need to be respectful of everyone at the table. Of course, you can't just be talking over everybody and taking long turns, you know, rolling multiple dice all the time and going bonkers. No. But you can fully invest yourself. And to me, the mental energy you need to do that can be accessed in the process of letting go. And what I want to invite you guys to try is before your next session or even before you pull out your journal to do some prep work, or before your friends are going to come over and the Doritos start rolling and the session is underway, is to take five quiet minutes with yourself. Close your damn books. <laughs> close your eyes. And think about the release. Think about the release of your judgments, the release of your preparation, of your so-called backstory, <laughs> of your predicted outcomes of your power synergies, <laughs> how your feats and your new skills combine to form the ultimate you know, triple combo attack. <laughs> you are manually flipping off switches in your brain that are using power. And they involve control, 
preparation and expectation. You are in your mind visualizing these switches, you're flipping them off, and then you have these knobs, and you're turning up these knobs to 11, and those knobs are role-playing, going with it, improvising, laughing, paying close attention to others, and most of all, being an animated, energetic, and loyal friend to those who joined you at the table and making their night as fun as you can with your energy and attention. That's the affirmation I want to invite you to try. Now, I know that a lot of the RPG Mainframe podcasts are all about mechanics, about idea creation, about creative thinking. But this one, I just wanted to let you guys know because I went through this very process. So I don't ever want my voice to come across as professorial or prescriptive. I'm not saying from on high, oh, yeah, this is the way it should be. No. I am going through these discoveries week by week exactly like you guys, and this is like a report. This is, this is an emotional podcast report <laughs> about, to me, what happened with my group and why it added up to such a fun session. And if I really had to sort of argue why this thesis is worthwhile for a podcast, it would be we all want that. As enthusiasts of the hobby, our number one goal is to have kick-ass, super fun sessions. And you don't always get them, right? It doesn't mean you give up. It doesn't mean you quit. It doesn't mean you dislike your homies. It just means that particular session didn't have the magic to it. And anybody who does any sort of physical exercise knows this too. If you don't let go and you have a bunch of worries and concerns and preparation and expectation when you're trying to exercise, you tend to not have a lot of energy. You tend to be more lethargic and you don't get into the quote unquote zone, which is I think the athletic term for this kind of presence of mind or absence of mind as the case may be. And so if you want to have super fun kick-ass sessions, which I know you do because you're part of the shield wall of Runehammer, you've already waded through the entire internet to find me. And I'm just like you. I want to have a freaking blast with my friends. I want to speak in a dwarven accent and I want to roll big damage on my sword. You know, <laughs> I'm a simple man. <laughs> so there's a lot of parts and pieces to make that happen. But one of them, and just the one that I wanted to talk about just for 25 minutes or so here, is this idea of letting go, releasing ourselves from all this duty and work that we need to do to make this hobby happen, and being in the moment, enjoying it, being silly, sending our backstory straight to hell. You don't need it. The fun of your character and even of being a, a dungeon master, a game master, is in the actions of now not in the preparation and description of the past and not in the expectation or anticipation of the future. It is your actions in this moment. So stay tuned, please, you guys, on YouTube this month, and thank you so much for your patience this month as my energy that normally goes into Patreon goes into all of YouTube. I think it's going to have a really fun outcome that everybody can take a whack at, which is the, <laughs> the carapace adventure itself. And then we're going to get back. I wouldn't call it business as usual in August because I think things are going to get really quite shaken up in August. There's a lot of new treats coming out and a lot of projects are wrapping up. And so fall is going to see some very interesting new emphasis. And I can't wait to take you guys along for the ride as we continue to be neck deep in the world's best hobby. I've been having a great time this summer playing with my friends. We had a few weeks that we had to take off because of summer, obviously, and it's so great to be back in the zone, fighting the forces of evil together as friends. And, you know, that's just where it's at for me. That's when I'm in my happy place. So I'm just going to keep on keeping rocking on. All right, you guys, this is the podcast built to last. This is the RPG mainframe right here. Stay tuned to everything else that's going on to the internet, you guys, and I'll see you over there. Thanks for tuning in. This is your old buddy Ingrid Burnall. I'll see you on uh, the Dungeon DJ stream live tonight, and if not, on the next Hakun Carapace video on YouTube. And then keep an eye out for the finished PDF of that adventure by the end of the month. I think it's going to be pretty cool, pretty cool. And it'll come with a bunch of uh, you know print and play stuff as usual. So we're just gonna we just gonna get work done up in here, all right, you guys. I hope y'all are having a great summer, getting plenty of time with dice and friends. 
You get yourself a beer and pull one out for your old buddy Ingrid, all right? I'll see you guys soon. I'm out. It's a sand squid.